world's largest school by pupils city montessori school in lucknow india has since 1959 steadily progressed with the missionary zeal of developing individuals seeped in the ancient indian philosophy of vasudheva kutumbakam that is earth is but one country and mankind its citizens and jay jagat victory to the world towards this endeavor the founders of the school drs jagdish and bharati gandhi realized early that education should instill a global vision in this interdependent world global citizenship education is the mandate so as to help broaden young minds in creating a world that works well for everyone cms's world education department headed by the school's founder manager dr jagdish gandhi has in its 21st century broader education model envisaged an era that values problem solving and critical thinking and thus has an intensified focus on promoting the concept of world unity and peace for a safe future of the world's children he looked up to the impartial and intellectual strata of society the world judiciary to brainstorm on the concept of a unified one world order thus began the international conferences of the chief justices of the world with an aim to create global awareness about the need for enforceable international law based on article 51 of the constitution of india with international peace and security as the spirit of article 51 in 2020 an unusual year owing to the covid-19 pandemic that has led to disruption in education cms has leveraged technology to seamlessly move all classes online for the entirety of the academic session virtually uninterrupted the 21st international conference of chief justices of the world will pan out over 3 days of intense webinars on the global governance structure a post covid imperative which will witness the participation of 102 heads of states chief justices judges legal luminaries and peace promoters from 63 countries zooming in online transcending various time zones the webinar of the inaugural ceremony was graced by the chief guest honorable mr rajnath singh union defense minister presided over by mrs sanyukta bhatia mayor of lucknow and special guest mr gary arathun chief executive and secretary of the council for the indian school certificate examinations 73 participating guests cms management principals and other eminent invitees pre opening activities showcased the grand performances by the cms student bands reminiscent of the pre covid times dear viewers the excerpts of the opening ceremony are presented by our erudite compeers mrs veera hajela and mrs shipra upadhyay principals cms So let the magic unfold ladies and gentlemen hold your breaths fasten your seat belts and sit back and enjoy
time now for me to invite the visionary, the man himself, Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, who conceptualized the concept of a conference of the stature 21 years ago, the International Conference of the Chief Justices of the World. Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, founder manager of City Montessori School and convener of the conference. It's our proud privilege to welcome our most honorable chief guest, Honorable Shri Rajnath Singhji, the Defense Minister of India. Simple and unassuming, with immense love for the humanity, he believes in the philosophy of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. We are equally honored to welcome Honorable Srimati Sankta Bhatia, the Lord Mayor of Lucknow, our most honored guest of honor. Sankta Bhatia is the Mayor of Lucknow. My place of worship is my heart alone, and my deeds of kindness is my religion. To endorse this very concept through a beautiful presentation of the all religion prayer, it's over to the teachers of City Montessori School, Kanpur campus, yet again. <laughs> सब धर्मों का सभी जगह हो सुंदर एक भवन जिसके प्रांगण में हो एकता शांति और अमन हृदय एक हो सबके एक हो सबके भावना मिलके करे सब प्रार्थना तब आएगी सद्भावना मिलके करे सब प्रार्थना तब आएगी सद्भावना ओम जय Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you the senior principal of City Montessori School, Kanpur Road campus, Dr. Vinita Kamran, in all her dynamism. Ladies and gentlemen, we at City Montessori School believe that school should be a lighthouse to the society and must concern itself with the affairs of the age. Therefore, CMS, as the self-appointed custodian of the welfare of the two billion children born and yet to be born, has taken upon the challenge to safeguard the lives of the future generations under the guidance of great luminaries and visionaries like you. I can see that the day is not far away when these efforts for universal brotherhood and yearning for peace and unity will become a reality and show light to many across the world. That we have this opportunity to interact with people across the globe has made me think that can we really consider unity to be an elusive element out of the reach of the people of this world? I don't think so. I believe that unity is within our grasp and this virtual platform is a living example of that belief. And I think that belief will be reiterated as you watch this world unity prayer, beautifully presented by the teachers of the City Montessori School, Kanpur Road campus, as they express their faith in the human spirit, conquering all challenges and coming together to take this ever advancing civilization forward.
Article 51C of the Indian Constitution states that I quote the state shall endeavor to promote international peace and security maintain just and honorable relations between nations foster respect for international law and encourage settlement of international disputes by arbitration I unquote I am an empowered and conscious world citizen. I have emerged from the City Montessori School philosophy. Bright colors of culture and the beauty of multifarious religions and faiths coexisting. Asia as a whole is a voracious example of peace. May unity prevail. on earth i pray for the people of asia may unity prevail in asia chaat le suko dekhi to man mein aman to rakhna राहत है दूर भी तो मन में अमन तू रखना कस्तूरी जो मह के मृग बह के पर वो ना जाने दुनिया में जो ढूंढे है उसके अंदर ही ठिकाने बदलाव जो चाहे तू वो खुद ही तू बनना मन में अमन तो रख बहुत बहुत स्वागत है हमारे उस मेधावी नेता का जो आज हमारे साथ इस मंच पर उपस्थित हैं ऑनरेबल श्री राजनाथ जी जो हमारे बीच आज यहाँ पर इस वर्चुअल प्लेटफॉर्म पर अपना संदेश दुनिया के कोने कोने से आए जुटे इन विधिक लोगों को देना चाहते हैं बताना चाहते हैं कि कैसे भारत आने वाले समय में एक नया प्रपत्र लिखेगा जो प्रपत्र एकता की स्याही से रचा जाएगा सो आई वेलकम आर मोस्ट ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर डिफेंस मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया श्री राजनाथ सिंह जी तो भारतीय संविधान के अनुच्छेद 51 पर आयोजित ये ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट अंतर्राष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन में पढ़ा रही गणमान्य अतिथि गण तिरसठ अन्य देशों से पढ़ा रहे हंड्रेड टू स्पीकर मौजूदा मंत्रीगण मुख्य न्यायाधीशों न्यायाधीशों कानूनविदों एवं विश्व शांति संस्थाओं के प्रतिनिधियों का मैं हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूँ साथ ही मैं इस अंतर्राष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन के आयोजन हेतु इस अंतर्राष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन के संयोजक एवं सिटी मॉन्टेसरी स्कूल के संस्थापक प्रबंधक डॉक्टर जगदीश गांधी को हार्दिक बधाई देता हूं कि उन्होंने भारत के साथ दुनिया भर के बच्चों के भविष्य को सुरक्षित बनाने के लिए आप सभी को एक मंच पर इकट्ठा होने का अवसर प्रदान किया है हमारे देश के प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघ महासभा के पचहत्तरवें अधिवेशन में विश्व के नेताओं को संबोधित करते हुए कहा था कि भारत ने हमेशा से ही दुनिया को सद्भावना और शांति का संदेश दिया है यह बात वर्ष अठारह में विवेकानंद के शिकागो में पार्लियामेंट ऑफ वर्ल्ड रिलीजन में 
दिए गए ऐतिहासिक संबोधन की भावना के अनुरूप ही है भारत की विदेश नीति हमेशा से ही मित्रता एवं सहयोग की रही है और हमारे प्रधानमंत्री के नेतृत्व में हमने हमेशा शांति स्थापना पर ही बल दिया है और हमारी भारतीय संस्कृति वसुदई व कुटुंबकम के उच्च आदर्श पर आधारित है और यही व्यापक सोच हमारे संविधान के अनुच्छेद 51 में निहित है सिटी माउंटेसरी स्कूल की पहल पर भारत के संविधान के अनुच्छेद 51 की भावना के अनुरूप सारे विश्व में एकता शांत और मानवता की भलाई करने एवं संसार के बच्चों के भविष्य को सुरक्षित बनाने का जो बीड़ा आप सभी ने उठाया है उसकी मैं भूरी भूरी प्रशंसा करता हूं I now invite the convener of the conference founder manager of city montessori school dear friends as you all know that we are 7.5 billion people in this world and out of this one third that is 2.5 billion are the children in this world whose future has become progressively more insecure and unprotected during past seven decades since the bombing of hiroshima and nagasaki and the recent spread of international terrorism global warming and environmental degradation stockpiling of arms and ammunition and ever increasing expenditure on military defense in 1999 children of my school asked me what is going to be our future and when i realized the future is going to be very bleak because the so much of uh, stock piling of arms and ammunition the every government on the earth is spending lot of money on warfare and production of destruction ma uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction what is going to be the future in this phase so i start i thought what should i do so then i wrote a letter to kofi annan several letters i wrote to him and finally i wrote a very strong letter when he replied i wrote that you are the secretary general of united nations you cannot run away from your responsibility of protecting the humanity from the scourge of war ke mukhya nyayadhisho nyayadhisho kanun vidho एवं विश्व शांति संस्थाओं के प्रतिनिधियों का मैं लखनऊ के महापौर के रूप में हार्दिक स्वागत एवं अभिनंदन करती हूं। साथ ही में मैं इस अंतरराष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन के आयोजन हेतु इस अंतरराष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन के संयोजक एवं सिटी मॉन्टेसी स्कूल के संस्थापक प्रबंधक डॉक्टर जगदीश गांधी को हार्दिक बधाई देती हूँ की उन्होंने भारत के साथ ही विश्व के 2.5 अरब बच्चों के साथ आगे जन्म लेने वाली पीढ़ियों के भविष्य को सुरक्षित बनाने के लिए एक बार फिर से जोरदार आवाज उठाने के लिए सभी को एक मंच पर इकट्ठा होने का अवसर प्रदान किया है लखनऊ के नागरिकों की तरफ से मैं की टू द सिटी ऑफ लखनऊ माननीय पूर्व राष्ट्रपति त्रिनदाद एंटोबैगो के न्यायाधीश श्री एन, एंटोनी थॉमस एक्यूनस कारमोना को भेंट स्वरूप प्रदान कर रही हूँ नैनी शुभ शुभकामनाओं के साथ आपको बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं धन्यवाद वी विल नाउ रिक्वेस्ट ऑनरेबल जस्टिस Anthony Thomas Carmona to deliver his acceptance speech. Namaste to the chief judge chief justices judges and distinguished leaders of the world distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Right. Today's ceremony is personally a humbling one. I wish to express my profound gratitude to chief guest the honorable Sri Mr Rajnath Sri Rajnath Singh Minister of Defence Government of India. The First Lady Mayor of the City of Lucknow, the Honourable Mrs. Sajukta Bhatia, the organisers of the 21st Century Conference of Chief Justices of the World, 
especially Dr. Jashis Gandhi and his remarkable executive, the City Montessori School, and all the students, teachers, and principals, and the people of the city of Lucknow for bestowing me this great honor. The children of the city Montessori School, like the children in my home country of Trinidad and Tobago, and the children around the world that, whom I have met and spoken to, they continue to be all weather sources of inspiration and a constant reminder of our inter and intergenerational responsibility to do what is right and what is required. This award, the keys to the city of Lucknow, will serve as an inspiration to me to continue to soldier on in the trenches of advocacy, even when the results are seemingly unattainable or when persons remain indifferent to the plight of their fellow men or when people's personal and political agenda are made superior to the needs of the people they serve. I will continue to advocate for and do the right thing because it is the right thing to do. Mr. Gary Aratun, Chief Executive and Secretary of the Council for the Indian School Certificate Examination. He has changed the face of education in India. The quality education in India has been started by him and I request him to say a few words. I am extremely pleased and most humbled to be present and be a part of this August gathering of some of the world's brightest minds at this online 21st International Conference of Chief Justices of the World. City Montessori School, under the leadership of its founder manager, Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, has shown how a school can fulfill its role of being a lighthouse of society by committing itself to service through which it is not only uniting the world and building peace, but also inspiring students, teachers, parents, governments, and the world judiciary to be proactive and concerned citizens of this world. I am sure that City Montessori School will lead its students to change the world for a better and more secure future for all. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a cultural presentation by members of the Federation of World Peace and Love, FAUPOL as we call them. They are here again with their mellifluous message of peace and abiding unity in the world. This year, participants of the annual International Conference of Chief Justices of the World can only meet virtually due to the pandemic. However, our passion to change the world and to encourage each other is just as strong. Fopal would like to send our best wishes through traditional martial arts and cultural presentations. Martial artists learn from nature. They learn to be brave like the cart and be determined to surpass oneself. are beautiful and auspicious creatures that swim freely in the waters.
Legend has it that if a carp swims tirelessly against the current and successfully jumps over the dragon's gate, it will transform into an auspicious dragon. a school and a school is uh, a humble institution um, but to such a humble institution probably unarguably some of the most eminent people of the world have come to today and during the course of this forthcoming conference to meet with some of the humblest people on the planet namely school teachers school children and people like the management of a school. And what is it that we have the utter privilege? What is it that makes you willing to come and be with uh, such a relatively insignificant institution is not even a university among educational institutions. And I believe that that thing is, you know, if I was to encapsulate that, there is an old adage, which is, um, probably has a lot of wisdom in it, namely that the birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> now, we are not birds of a feather in the traditional sense of the word, of the, of the phrase, birds of a feather. We are very diverse in our ages, in our genders, in our nationalities, in our religions, in our languages, and so on and so forth, culture and so forth. But what is the binding thread, the uniting concept, the principle, is the common concern that we have for the issues for which uh, we have come together to discuss at this conference. And I think this emotional uh, similarity, this, um, this intellectual similarity is the binding thread and it is, that is the, the birds of a feather. Schools have a tremendous responsibility in reshaping a better future. City Montessori School has embarked on creating a roadmap for the future need based on education for protection and security of the world's children and generations thereafter. The inaugural session, hosted by Mrs. Abha Anand and Mrs. Aditi Sharma, Principals, City Montessori School. Let us all rise together to invoke the blessings of Almighty God on this August gathering through the school prayer presented by the students of City Montessori School, Gomtinagar Extension Campus. wide ocean of uncertainty and because this discussion is so important that it cannot be just confined to politicians. We, the children of the world, reach out to you, the members of world judiciary, government leaders, members of civil society, to hear us here today as we issue a clarion call for world unity, for on world unity will depend world peace. People all over the world look to the United Nations to protect them from hunger, disease, violence and natural disasters whenever the task seems too big for the nations or regions to handle alone. But we at United Nations can do nothing alone either. Our strength is the strength of our member nations when they agree to act together for common good. 
Dr. Gandhi then wrote letters on behalf of CMS students to all the heads of states and heads of governments who would be participating in the Millennium Summit in September 2000, urging them to provide to the children of the world their right to a safe future by supporting the call for a new international political and economic order at the Millennium Summit. With just under 10 years left to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, world leaders at the SDG Summit in 2019 called for a decade of action and delivery for the sustainable development and pledged to mobilize financing, enhance national implementation and strengthen institutions to achieve the goals by the target year of 2030, leaving no one behind. There is need for international cooperation and multilateralism like never before. The choices that the world leadership makes at this point will decide the fate of our world. Urgent and immediate action is the need of the hour. We exhort all world leaders to commit themselves to building a safe future for all the children of the world by coming together for a meeting with a clear agenda that is unite for the sake of the children of the world. This means willingness to give up a part of national sovereignty and acceptance of a global governing body that can make and implement laws for a more just and humane world. World leaders must meet now, firmly resolved to that reflects the aspirations of the people of the world and prepare an action plan for making the United Nations an effective and relevant instrument of global solidarity, multilateralism and global governance. We appeal to you to support the efforts of the United Nations for there is no other organization that is that legitimacy or legacy. We make this appeal to you on behalf of over 55,000 students of City Montessori School who consider themselves to be the representatives of 2.5 billion children across the globe and the generations yet to be born. The world is going through one of the most difficult times in the history of man. COVID-19 has brought in so much fear, anxiety and depression that it has manifested through feelings of nationalism, racism, conflict and terror. From an era of social mingling, we have entered into an era of social distancing. This catastrophe is a war of a different dimension. It is not just the corona pandemic that the world has to fight. The world needs to unite to fight racism that has become a pandemic and it needs to strive to end violence, conflict and harassment of the people. Greetings ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the special session of the World Parliament on the occasion of the 21st International Conference of Chief Justices of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this conference of Chief Justices of the World is Global Governance, a post-COVID imperative. This conference has been convened with the hope to prepare a roadmap for developing global governance structures needed to guarantee a safe and secure future for mankind. We at CMS believe that the future of the world is in the hands of the judiciary, the custodian of the welfare of humanity through its power to impart justice to one and all. The judges of the world need to unite for the survival of humanity. The objective of the 21st Chief Justices Conference is to deliberate upon the need for having an enforceable world's law for an effective global governance. On 21st September 2020, at a summit to mark the 75th year of the United Nations, Secretary General Antonio Guterres remarked, Nobody wants a world government but we must work together to improve world governance. The world wants peace and prosperity, which can come only through unity and collaboration. And mankind today wants safe and secure laws, which will ensure their free living in a politically just, 
environmentally safe and terror free world a global consensus has been reached regarding the need for reform of the existing structures of global governance importance of protection of environment tackling race religion and gender prejudices across societies and a global citizenship education to bring about peace harmony and unity in the world we are extremely happy to announce that the chief guest of this inaugural session mr sudhanshu trivedi member of parliament rajya sabha has joined us we are extremely honored to welcome our most honorable chief guest dr sudhanshu trivedi ji member of parliament and national spokesman of the ruling bhartiya janata party of india we are also honored to welcome honorable mr justice debide hilario former chief justice of supreme court of philippines we are also honored to welcome <laughs> the president of the republic of south africa um, uh, his excellency uh, mr kalema uh, motrante we are also honored to welcome his excellency dr pakalita b mosi lili uh, prime minister of lesotho we are also honored to welcome right honorable professor a m akwe speaker of the parliament of republic of ghana dr sudanshu trivedi has been a brilliant student of our school city mounts school of this very school he is a phd in mechanical engineering and has served as a distinguished faculty in mechanical engineering department of very prestigious universities of the country he has been um, he has been assistant professor at the apj kalam abdul uh, abdul kalam technological university i invite honorable mr justice hilario david junior former chief justice of philippines to deliver the keynote address mahatma gandhi the greatest proponent of the genuine search for the absolute truth and the creed of active non-violence his india's pride the world's pride and uh, he added yet this passage the world is the playground of god and a reflection of his glory and to him god is the absolute truth the various case we have struck, we have been working on seem to have failed to attract the hearts and minds and perhaps the imagination of states and world leaders and national leaders they cannot see or simply refuse to see the vision of dr gandhi and the cms student of the urgency of enforceable world law and global governance a world government a world parliament a world judiciary instruments which could fully secure among others the identity the sanctity of mother earth it gives me immense pleasure to invite dr sudhanshu trivedi most honorable chief guest for the inaugural morning session we usually have the chief justices conference every year organized by city monetary school and we talk about global governance the global rules and the global directives which should govern the entire humanity but i think this year the situation is different which is forcing us more to think about in this perspective so obviously it needs a global governance if not governance then at least some coherent global principles on which every country every society needs to adhere so it is time to think about what should be the global governing principle if i ask you which are the two three problems which the entire world is witnessing today 
One is the environmental crisis, the ecological imbalances. No country can say that I am immune of the ecological imbalances. The other is the nuclear threat. The type of nuclear arsenal which we are having are capable of destroying the earth several times. So no country in the world can say that I am totally, I have nothing to do with the nuclear threat or the atomic bomb threat. And the third is terrorism. If we want to have a global governance, the country should also have a good global character. It's our great, great pleasure to have heard this morning, Dr. Sudhanshu Trivedi, uh, in a wide ranging address, uh, which was erudite, um, eloquent, persuasive, convincing, and which raised rather fundamental issues about what should be the principles governing the governance of the world. I experience great honor to invite our next speaker for the morning, His Excellency, Mr. Kalema Motlante, former president of the Republic of South Africa. The concept of a system of global governance with smooth multilateral negotiations between global institutions and world leaders representing informed citizens that engage effectively with transnational players from the private sector as well as civil society is a concept that distills our greatest ideals for humanity and inclusive democracy. Uh, however, in reality, international leaders disagree on actions to address global challenges and these disparate decisions often do not intersect at the crucial points of peace justice, and a safe and secure future for humanity and the natural environment. I feel highly honored and privileged to invite another eminent personality, a great world leader, the former Prime Minister of Lesotho, His Excellency, Dr. Pakalitha P. B. Mosesili. Crafted as it was in the aftermath of World War II, some 75 years ago today, the United Nations system is pathetically unfit for purpose in today's world. The UN is still the closest institution to a global government. While its reform is frustratingly slow or stagnating, it is still the best option we have. My considered view is that its membership be upgraded from the level of individual sovereign states to that of regional or continental communities, such as the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, the African Union, AU, the European Union, EU, and other such unions of nations. And now, we will all have the privilege of listening to the video address which has been sent to us by Honorable Retired Professor A. M. Okue, Speaker of the Parliament, Republic of Ghana. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a post-COVID global governance structure should consider a number of factors that support developing countries, particularly in Ghana, when we have Abandoned gold, diamond, manganese, bauxite, timber, oil, cocoa, and cashew. Global governance institutions need to critically consider new partnership agreements which will be fair, just, and equitable for these resources to be applied in a way that will bring maximum benefit to all the parties. By global treaties and a redefinition of the current order, we need a new economic paradigm, and this will encompass laws which promote global uh, justice and equity, laws which positively impact on poverty, misery, and disease, laws which promote equity and due consideration to all among the committee of nations, laws which essentially pr promote an equilibrium of enablement for all, in short, treatises of economic justice. 
I would like to once more invite our president and managing director of City Montessori School to propose the vote of thanks and close this inaugural session. To uh, thank the uh, valued and eminent guests who have very kindly give their, given their time to be at this conference at City Montessori School, helping not only the students and teachers of the school to think about these grave issues facing humanity and to help us therefore, particularly our students, to grow into responsible world citizens who understand the issues that beset the uh, global community, but also to use this platform to create a climate of international public opinion by speaking before other uh, brother judges and other eminent thinkers and thought leaders uh, to give more prominence by making sure that these ideas reach a wider audience. And no doubt, these will also be covered in the media and therefore reach a wider group of people. If internet has today reduced space and time to nullity, COVID-19 pandemic has exposed a number of shortcomings in terms of existing global governance structure. Dear viewers, here are some emerging ideas from the first plenary session hosted by principals of CMS, Mrs. Nisha Pandey, Mrs. Poonam Arora. I now request respected Dr. Geeta Gandhi Kingdon to welcome our chief guest and the esteemed panelists for this session. It is our great pleasure to welcome the most honored chief guest, Honorable Shri Kal Raj Mishra, Governor of Rajasthan at the online 21st International Conference of Chief Justices of the world. Kal Raj Mishra ji, a famous Indian politician, made his debut at the center, that means at the central government level in 2014. You're very warmly welcome, sir, and we are so honored that you have given your time very kindly to be at this international conference to deliberate upon how the world can be made a better place for all. Today, the world is confronted by more daunting challenges than ever before. Global problems require global solutions. With such a mission in mind, Dr. Hong Tao Zi has led the Federation of World Peace and Love we believe that only when conscience, love, and peace coexist can we consolidate the power of goodness to change the world, resolve conflicts and global crises with wisdom, and create peace together. We now present before you a video message from Honorable Mr. Justice Sheikh Salim Said Atamin. <laughs> Les enfants instruits et en bonne santé sont en effet plus aptes à exploiter leur potentiel et à apporter leur contribution à la société. Inversement, les problèmes de développement de l'enfant se prolongent souvent à l'âge adulte et les coûts sociaux qui en résultent échouent également à la génération suivante. Time now for me to invite Honorable Mr. Justice Osman Batoko, President Supreme Court, Benin. Excellences, Madame et Monsieur Gandhi, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs les chefs de haute juridiction. The solidarity that we face requires the efficiency as well. On the international level, global governance, which, is, which should be based on solidarity and synergy, should be there. For me, this international space is open today and I feel thankful to express my opinion. My thinking is that global uh, thinking right now is very much required and slowly we will be able to guarantee our future generations a safe future and a peaceful place for all rights of men. Time now for me to invite the next speaker, Honorable Mr. Justice Laraba Mosa. Sir is the Permanent Secretary General of the Conference of Constitutional Jurisdiction of Africa. He is the former judge of the Constitutional Court of Algeria. 
and also graced us with his presence in the conference of 2019. Education for global citizenship is a subject that has grown in recent years. Hence, the interest of international institutions which attach particular importance to this subject. My intervention will focus on two ideas. The first idea relates to education as a means to promote the development of world citizenship. The second idea concerns new information and communication technologies as a means of bringing together citizens on the world. We now move on to the keynote address by Honorable Justice Dr. Adil Omar Sheriff, Deputy Chief Justice, Supreme Constitutional Court, Egypt. At this specific session of our conference that I'm honored to address, the focus is on global governance post COVID-19. The topic of global governance posted this unpredictable, dangerous, and full blown crisis of COVID-19 pandemic is highly relevant and important due to the devastating aftermaths of a pandemic that remains largely out of control and has already killed over 1.2 million people around the world and infected more than 48 million. At this moment, we should evaluate the existing situation as a clear test of international cooperation. And we should be urged to work together in unity in order not to fail this test. I would like to invite our guest of honor, Honorable Mr. Galema Watlante, former president of the Republic of South Africa, to give his address. Within global geopolitics, this means those least responsible for carbon-centric living with the lowest per capita emissions are now carrying the burden of climate shocks. We are extremely honored to welcome our most honorable chief guest, Honorable Sri Kalad Mishaji, Governor of Rajasthan, on to attend this uh, 21st International Conference of Chief Justices of the World. Global governance, a post-COVID imperative, Vishayapar online ayodhik kiye ja rahe, Vishya ke mukhe naayat vishon ke, ek kisme antar raakye sammelan me, arat ki yor se, mein aap sabhi ka adhrandan karta. Kanji, Vaishwik Sachan Vyostha ko, बेहतर और प्रभावी बनाने की जिम्मेदारी प्रमुख रूप से संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघ की होती है परंतु सदस्य देशों की भी इसमें अहम भूमिका होती है मुझे याद है कि संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघ की महासभा के पचहत्तरवे सत्र में हमारे देश के प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने कोरोना महामारी में संयुक्त राष्ट्र की भूमिका पर सवाल उठाए थे उन्होंने तब यह भी कहा था कि बीते पचहत्तर वर्ष सालों में संयुक्त राज्य की अनेक उपलब्धियां रही हैं परंतु कोविड जैसे ऐसे भी बहुत से अवसर आए हैं जब संयुक्त राज्य के समक्ष गंभीर आत्मंथन की आवश्यकता खड़ी हुई है इट इज वेरी एपरेंट that the global governance system today does not reflect the realities of the world and is woefully inadequate to respond effectively to the new challenges of the 21st century. In this grappling world scenario, reforms of the global governance structure is the need of the hour. Excerpts from the first thematic session hosted by Mrs. Sangeeta Banerjee and Mrs. Jyotsna Atul Principals, City Montessori School. Dr. H.C. Adil Omar Sharif, the Deputy Chief Justice of the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt and a distinguished visiting professor of law at Dead Men School of Law, Southern Methodist University, Dallas, USA. 
So it's really uh, uh, my great pleasure to have the responsibility of moderating this um, first thematic session of the Conference on Global Governance Structure. Um, I'm very privileged to have this opportunity and within a group of very prestigious uh, judicial uh, um, calibers from different parts of the world. May I request Justice Sharda Shrestha to please join the meeting and share her views on the thematic group reforms of the global governance structure, please. We are, the World Committee is one of humanity, and we have to work together in harmony to the benefit of, of the children. And now we call upon uh, the uh, Honorable Mr. Justice uh, Rajan, the chairperson of NRI Commission, the government of Karkala, uh, India. It is unfortunate that the existing international institutions such as United Nations, United Nations Security Council and World Health Organization have failed to overcome the great challenge posed by the pandemic disease. The World Health Organization has been tarred with the charge of bias and it underestimated the gravity of the epidemic. Therefore, now a global consensus has been developed among the world leaders, national governments, to reform the existing structure of global governance. Based on this, scientists are now working for the development of corona vaccine in a globally convened platform. Now I call upon the uh, Honorable Justice uh, Iman El Malki uh, from the Training Institute in Morocco. An initiative that requires us to present expressions of thanks and appreciation for the good selection of the scientific access for this big conference, which, in moderate, which is moderated by a group of judges, academics, professionals, and jurists who throw their sober opinions and objective remarks will definitely add a great scientific and professional value that will contribute to crystallizing serious practical concepts and mechanisms and will open new horizons for governance in judicial efficiency. Our last speaker in this session, this is the Honorable Justice Mustafa Osman, the former judge of the Supreme Court of Turkey. Justice Sheriff, I would like to in, uh, inform you that Justice Mustafa Osman has just called me on WhatsApp and said, Dear participants, our topic is reforms of global governance structure. I would like to ask you, why is global governance? And do we need a global governance? And will it come true someday in the future? I wish I wish it would come true. However, it seems it's too hard to be happen. But, but I want it to be happen in close future. Because there are a lot of problems in various places of the world. The problems are especially such as wars, violation of human rights, poverty, corruptions, natural disasters, etc. I want to emphasize the issues of human rights. Mankind is the most honorable creature of the universe. He deserves dignity. He has a lot of fundamental rights and freedoms. The second plenary session of the day was hosted by Mrs. Jai Shri Krishnan and Mrs. Reena Soti, Principal's CMS. Here are the excerpts. It is our proud privilege to welcome our most honored chief guest, Honorable Shri Hridayanand Dikshit Ji, Speaker of the UP Legislative Assembly of Uttar Pradesh, uh, uh, attending the online 21st International Conference of Chief Justices of the World. Our Samidhan Nirmata, Lambi Bahis Kebad, Pahut Gahen Bichar Vimarsh, हुआ था तब संविधान बनाए थे हमारे संविधान निर्माताओं को ही बेचैनी थी इसकी विश्व शांति की और इसलिए संविधान में अनेक जगह इसका उल्लेख है प्रियंबल का मूल प्रस्ताव 
संविधान सभा में पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू जी रखा था उसमें भी मूल प्रस्ताव में भी विश्व शांति की बात थी और भारत संवैधानिक सत्ता के और पहले से भारत का इतिहास बड़ा प्राचीन है तमाम बाहर की शक्तियां यहां आई उन्होंने हम पर हुकूमत भी की उसके भी बहुत पहले हजारों वर्ष पहले जिस कालखंड में भारतीय दर्शन का विकास हो रहा था उस समय जिस कालखंड में अध्ययन किया जा रहा था कि सारी दुनिया के लोग आत्मौत भाईचारे के रूप में रहें तब से वसुधैव कुटुंबकम यह संकल्प भारत के लोग व्यक्त करते आए हैं Dr. Uga Augusto Lopez Claros is an international economist with over 30 years of experience in international organizations including most recently at the World Bank. From 2018-19 academic years, Dr. Augusto Lopez Claros has been on leave was on leave from the World Bank as a senior fellow at the Edmund Walsh School of Foreign Service at Georgetown University. Um and it might be useful just for a very very, very for a few seconds to go back to 1945. and to uh, recognize that um, the context in which against which the united nations was created was uh, world war 2 uh, up to that time perhaps the most uh, uh, intense and destructive conflict that we had had in the history of, of mankind there were 60 million fatalities associated with that conflict and the delegates who attended the conference in san francisco in the period april to june of uh, 1945 sought to establish a framework for peace and security for the future the overriding concern at that time was essentially to come up with an organization that would allow countries to cooperate in an effective manner so that we would never have to face the calamity of another world conflict like world war 2 We will now move to um, uh, Justice um, Carl Ashok Singh, the former Chancellor of the Judiciary in Guyana. The pandemic has resulted and or forced significant changes upon us. The changed format of this conference is but one living example. We have seen, however, significant societal changes both at the domestic and the international level earlier i made reference to the remarks made by secretary general guterres to the united nations security council there is much that the distinguished gentleman said in his remarks that are worthy of mention here essentially the secretary general advocated the need for stronger multilateral relations among the nations of the world to the next and to the last speaker in our in our panel which is uh, justice antony thomas aquinas carmona the former president of the republic of trinidad and tobago how does the international community never lose sight of each and every individual is it necessary to establish new institutions to improve global governance to achieve the objective outlined by the un secretary general or is it necessary for existing institutions to be revamped to ensure that they deliver on their mandates with tremendous focus being placed on the need to develop a vaccine in order to effectively tackle the incidence of the virus globally tremendous spotlight has been placed on the role of the world health organization who in responding to the crisis which has seen criticism of who in some quarters the director general remarked and i quote history will judge us on the decisions we do and don't make in the months ahead let's seize the opportunity and bridge national boundaries to save lives and livelihoods end of quote this globe is our only home and hope cms students all through their school life are made aware of global citizenship through organizing 
myriad human and spiritual programs and activities in an academic session nurturing the belief of being a global citizen and work for jai jagat or victory to the world excerpts from the second thematic session global citizenship education session hosted by principals mrs ruchi bhuvan joshi mrs shivani singh i would request honorable mr justice barbara zobak judge supreme court slovenia to kindly express her views on global citizenship education since societies are divided into different states different nations ethnic groups religious the concept of global citizenship education sounds illusory my personal opinion is that the world no longer exists of separate countries but due to globalization it has become one big world where the countries should cooperate and help each other in overcoming the daily problems which they have in common and find structural solutions for these problems instead of fighting each other i would request uh, ms angelica rosha ponce attorney in the ministry of bolivia to kindly uh, let us uh, hear the address please during this past century there has been a gradual movement towards a more inclusive understanding of citizenship influenced by the development of civil political and social rights um current current perspectives or on national citizenship vary between countries reflecting difference in political and historical context among other factors an increasingly globalized world has raised questions about what constitutes meaningful citizenship and well as about its global dimension i would like to invite ms andrea thank you all. as vice rector international relation University of Concepcion del Uruguay Argentina The question that set the course of uh, for this panel this session are concrete challenges for us who work in internalis- internationalization it could be able to um universities to promote a global and inclusive view For example when we ask ourselves if education helps global citizenship to tackle global problems i would like to introduce the concept of educating for peace good night my friends my name is fernando leon my country is ecuador south america el mundo actual en que vivimos nos plantea importantes retos y desafíos que atañen a la humanidad en general que deben en forma necesaria ser abordado no solo por los actores nacionales, sino a nivel global, es decir, de todos los habitantes de la tierra. Esto implica necesariamente que la ciudadanía pueda llegar a entenderse desde una dimensión global para enfrentar juntos de mejor forma los desafíos generales del presente siglo. Se puede observar que en el siglo 21 se ha dado un vertiginoso avance en la tecnología lo que ha permitido acercarse cada vez más a las personas por asuntos de familia, estudios, negocios, etc. Es que la educación para una ciudadanía global nace como un enfoque mismo en la educación para poder darse oportunidades y competencias y enfrentar los desafíos que implica vivir en una sociedad globalizada e interconectada. The, the last speech is from Peru Uh, Judge Omar Chavez, uh, we also have a, a very strong relationship with the judiciary of Peru. The education should promote universal values. Other grounds of the judgment, the Constitutional Court accepted that social rights are progressive depending on the state budget, because that is as that is that it is thus regulated in the Peruvian constitution. But this reason not be an excuse for the state to violate social rights. According with this case law, the answer, the answer is, the judge can monitor the quality and implementation of public education policy for all children. This mission can be done through the unconstitutional state of affairs. 
according with this case law and this answer. By the way, let us remember the wise word of Bin Rao Ranji Amdekar, lawyer order of the Constitution of India. Law and order are the medicine of the body politic. And when the body politic gets sick, medicine must be administered. Dr. B. R. M. Daker. I would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to each one of the respected luminaries of the world, judiciary. We leave enlightened. Thank you very much. Jai Jagat for joining us. The following is a presentation of tomorrow's world. World Parliament, ho, World ki Government, ho, World Court of Justice. Ho. इसके लिए मैं चीफ जस्टिस कॉन्फ्रेंस करता हूं सारे वर्ल्ड के चीफ जस्टिस जजेस आते हैं और अभी तक एक सौ देश यूनाइटेड नेशंस के मेंबर हैं उसमें से 133 देशों के 1222 चीफ जस्टिस और जजेस हमारे आ चुके हैं आप ये देखिए कि बीसवीं कॉन्फ्रेंस हम नवंबर में करने जा रहे हैं छः नवंबर से बारह नवंबर तक ये बीसवीं होगी उन्नीस हम कर चुके हैं तो ये हमारी हर साल होती है तो इसमें चीफ जस्टिसेज आते हैं जजेज आते हैं आपके स्पीकर से पार्लियामेंट आते हैं राष्ट्रपति और प्रधानमंत्री भी आते हैं इसीलिए कि हम इस बात को एक ग्लोबल लेवल पर उठाना चाहते हैं कि वर्ल्ड की पार्लियामेंट बने This conference has since the turn of the century been demanding judiciary in ensuring that nations and organizations respect international and world law. Every year CMS offers a huge platform for legal luminaries and members of the civil society to deliberate on how a directly elected world parliamentary assembly can make the only truly multilateral organization that is the United Nations accountable legitimate and a universally accepted instrument of global governance covid pandemic has in the nick of time highlighted the need for multilateralism excerpts from the third plenary session of the conference on the theme global governance a post covid imperative friends will hopefully provide you with some food for thought the session hosted by principals of cms mrs jyoti kashyap mrs trapti dwivedi collective prayers and hailings of god by children students of city montessori school to present the school prayer i bear witness oh my god that thou hast created me to know thee and to worship thee time now to invite dr jagdish gandhi extremely honored to welcome our today's chief guest Professor Dr. Dinesh Sharma, Deputy Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh. He has been the well-known Professor of Commerce at the University of Lucknow, with varied interests in many other fields, such as literature, social welfare, and political activities. He has been conferred the most honourable Mayor Award at the World Mayors Conference held in Jerusalem, Israel, the Ambassador of Peace Award. from universal peace federation south korea inc icn yp award by the international council for youth affairs vienna austria to mention a few for the information of uh, uh, dr sharma i would like to tell that 63 countries are participating 102 um, chief justices judges president and prime ministers are participating in the four day long this uh, international event online one world one family vasudev kutumbakam i would like now to introduce dr parth cha member of the governing council of the indian school of public policy uh, dr parth cha is the founder of center for civil society which is probably india's best known think tank in healthcare in education right in many of these important areas we are a weak link world right is to make sure the weakest link has been prepared well right has been helped and brought to the sort of world class standard right 
So having a top players, few top players, is not really going to help us to deal with the post-COVID world. Right? And I think that has a lot of implications in terms of governance that we need to see uh, in the world, uh, not at least, uh, not just a global level, but also at the national level. Right? Uh, I think some of the work that is being done by many of the people uh, in international organizations is also equally important in pushing this idea of weak link world and how the weakest link needs to be emphasized, need to be looked upon, look, look, need to be cared for uh, in order to be able to address the larger global uh, challenges, including the pandemic that we are facing today. So with that, let me open the panel for discussion and the uh, esteemed guest uh, to speak uh, on the particular theme that we have. Our belief is that the whole of the भविष्य को सुंदर एवं सुरक्षित करना हमारी पहली प्राथमिकता होनी चाहिए इस लक्ष्य की प्राप्ति के लिए एक प्रभावशाली अंतरराष्ट्रीय शासन व्यवस्था सबसे सशक्त माध्यम है जिसका रास्ता भारतीय संविधान के अनुच्छेद 51 से निकलता है वास्तव में यह वह दिन दूर नहीं जब विश्व में एक नई विश्व व्यवस्था बनेगी और विश्व में एकता शांति व न्याय का राज कायम होगा मेरा पूर्ण विश्वास है कि इस पुनीत कार्य के लिए वैश्विक कोरोना महामारी की चुनौतियों के बीच ऑनलाइन आयोजित किए जाने वाला यह अंतरराष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन मील का पत्थर साबित होगा ऐसा मेरा मानना है आपके कार्यक्रम की सफलता के प्रति मेरी शुभकामनाएं हैं नाउ वी हैव द वीडियो एड्रेस बाय ऑनरेबल मिस जस्टिस तुंगलाइक दगवराज जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट मंगोलिया पितारवी सरतखतिंग इन विद विद बुखन शिन दिग जोरमत नीचे मर्चला शार्प तो तोड़ चुवा रहा था बुखन होते जुशे रहते मंगो तो सिंह होते इन फोन नुक्सल बैठ नीचे जन शुम पस्त खास लाइ तसर तो है भी आवाज़ लग उतने शो कुर्तुम बातन शो कुर्तन ने अर्थ शनरे आयत को बैठ लेकिन इन फिर गुम छोटचना फिर चुते तो � Honorable Ms. Justice Tungalak has rightly pointed out that populations across the globe struggle with varied repercussions of the novel coronavirus. And the one constituent common to all cities, regions and countries is the sense of uncertainty as to what the future holds. Now I would like to invite Honorable Mr. Justice G.T. Pegon, President International Association of Judges Australia to kindly present the keynote address. The spread of the virus has not stopped the need for the judiciary to do its work. The virus has not stopped the need for there to be the administration of justice. It has not stopped the need for disputes to be resolved. Cases still need to be heard uh, and uh, the law needs still to be administered. It has, however, stretched the resources of the judges and shown, to take the point that was uh, raised at the, at the outset, it has shown the significance of each of the links uh, and how the weakest links can often be the ones that, that need to be um, uh, those that cause us difficulty. In all of this, an independent judiciary is essential. An independent judiciary which applies the rule of law. And what that involves is that those who apply the law are different from those who make the law and different from those who administer the law in government. It requires also that judges make decisions independently from external influences so that people who are having disputes with one another or disputes with government can be confident that the decision that is being made is a, is a decision that is that of the decision maker uh, and not uh, something that's being imposed through uh, outside pressure or other kinds of forces. In these times of, of pandemic, many of us have now found ourselves, uh, as indeed we have always really been, just the custodians of the offices that we currently hold. For us, what is essential 
is that we leave to our children at least as good a place as we found. And we need to be very careful when seeing the impact of the pandemic on the rule of law to ensure that it does not erode those important underlying pillars that so many of our societies depend upon. I would now like to request Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, founder manager, City Montessori Chain of Schools, and the convener of the conference. And Chief Justice David Hilario, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Philippines said, he admitted that it, and he said, the judgment that he gave us, the children born and yet to be born, have a right for safe ecology. And because of that judgment, the, all the contracts that the government of Philippines has given were cancelled and thus saved the ecology. Uh, otherwise, the trees would have come, cut, and uh, the ecology would have been disturbed. That decision is one of the noblest and glorious victories of the children of our generation and of succeeding generations in this world. The COVID-19 pandemic has, in fact, opened not just a window of an opportunity, but the rare opportunity for the United Nations to promulgate needed effective resolutions for the Mother Earth, resolutions which may be the cornerstone of enforceable global governments on enforcement of the sources of life, LAW, or resolutions mandating member states to incorporate in the regional or national laws. Access to health and education, work and livelihood, protection against environment degradation, no violations of human rights, proliferations of deadly weapons, there is emerging a new definition of security from military security to health, work and social security. Yes, friends, excerpts from the third thematic session hosted by Mrs. Veera Hajela, Mrs. Shipra Upadhyay, Principal CMS, through light on freedom from want and fear, a new definition of security. Honorable Mr. Justice A.K. Srivastav, former judge, Allahabad and Delhi High Courts, India. 19 pandemic all over the world has changed the definition of military security. How? Without any cross-border military aggression, this virus emanating from Wuhan in China and is spreading out all over the world just in one month has acted as an external aggression for which no country was prepared in advance to combat. Military innovations to help combat COVID-19 had been in the form of designing and developing wide range of products to support the efforts of their countries to meet the effects of corona pandemic. Our chairperson and moderator, Honorable Mr. Justice Vincent A. D. Gaetano, Chief Justice Emeritus from Malta. Can I call upon Professor Alexander Chumakov uh, um, to uh, make his, to give us his, uh, to make his address to uh, this gathering? In the threat of a full-scale bacteriological war, a poor fantasy? Or has the potential threat of nuclear war become less? Of course not. And there are many other global problems. And what has already been said is enough to say that it is no longer possible to ignore global processes and their negative consequences or underestimate their objective historical nature. As it has been correctly said, ideas become material force when they take over the masses. This is why what is already well known to us should become the property of a wide public consciousness. And first of all, 
This applies to those who make decisions at all levels of government, regardless of the worldview, religions, and political positions. It should be clear to everyone that under the influence of globalization, by the beginning of the 20th century, humanity had completely become global. Of I have um, uh, Mr. Alan Ware, founder and global coordinator, Parliamentarians for Nuclear Non-Proliferation and Disarmament in Switzerland. I think this framework um, of the role of law is very important to replace and phase out the force, the law of force in international relations. You know, as we use law to govern peaceful relations within countries, so too should law be used to govern peaceful relations between countries and to be able to achieve our security without war, without the reliance on huge militaries and preparing for war, which uh, always has negative results. This morning and now this afternoon, it's my proud privilege to announce the presentation of the Nelson Mandela Nuclear Free Future Award to Mr. Alan Ware, Founder and Global Coordinator Parliamentarians for Nuclear Non-Proliferation and Disarmament, PNND Switzerland, by Dr. Mrs. Bharti Gandhi, Founder Director, City Montessori School. It gives me immense pleasure to present Nelson Mandela Nuclear Free Future Award to Mr. Alan Ware. Uh, thank you very much. I'll just say a few words in thanks. This is a, a great surprise and an incredible honor. Beautiful uh, mountainous uh, country of Bhutan. Um, uh, Mr. Justice um, uh, Yarge, you have the floor, sir. We, as of this morning, we only, uh, only 300, 358 people were infected and out of 338, uh, 358 people, 300, uh, 338 people have re recovered. And as of this hour, we only have 20 active cases in the country. And what is even more fortunate is that we haven't lost a single life to the COVID as of now. But of course, like many other countries, uh, the virus has caused a lot of problems, especially in the tourism and hospitality sector, leading to layoffs, unemployment, and other problems because of the restrictions in movement and lockdowns. Now, um, I believe that uh, uh, looking at the uh, program, there is um, a uh, uh, scheduled a video message by Ms. Masami Sayonji, chairperson of the Byako Shinkokai in Japan. In my opinion, the most dangerous threat to, threat to human security today in the rural development of artificial intelligence. We if we allow technology to advance without control, it will lead to destruction of humanity. We urgently need to establish. It is my great pleasure to present to Ms. Masami Sayonji, the chairperson of the Byako Shinko Kai Foundation, the Goi Foundation, the World Peace Prayer Society of Japan, a Lifetime Achievement Award for her major contributions to peace in the world. Uh, Ms. Uh, Masami Sayonji has been to City Montessori School many times in the past, over the past maybe 35, 40 years, and we have put several uh, peace poles with the words may peace prevail on earth as a result of the inspiration that we got from her. She has devoted her whole life to the cause of bringing peace in the world and it is our great honor 
and pleasure to award her from the City Montessori School of Science a Lifetime Achievement Award for her major contributions to peace. I can see Dr. Uh, Dr. Nabil Sari is there and uh, we look forward to his speech. Thank you. Uh, تساعد الناشئين على تلقي العلم بشكل يؤهلهم لدخول سوق العمل ثانيا تأمين فرص العمل للشباب بدون وساطة ثالثا تطبيق نظرية لا تطعمني سمكة بل علمني صيد السمك من هنا ضرورة تعزيز دور الضمان الاجتماعي والرعاية الصحية وتأمين النوادي الرياضية والثقافية رابعا تعزيز دور التماسك العائلي والاقتصادي والاجتماعي ولتلعب الأسرة دورها بشكل كامل في حماية our interconnected and interdependent world has made it imperative that an integrated multilateral response be made by the global governance system at the international level. Excerpts from the fourth plenary session hosted by Mrs. Abha Anand, Mrs. Aditi Sharma, Principals, CMS. Honorable B.J. Odoki, former Chief Justice, Court of Uganda. Sir, you have stood by the convener of this conference by revisiting us year after year as you strongly believe that a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, that each of us must be prepared to take that single step. In an earlier address at this conference, you affirmed that educational institutions are like nursery beds for planting the ideas of peace, unity, love, tolerance, and cooperation. Over to you, Honorable Justice Odoki, to share your thoughts on how the judiciary can live up to its responsibility of being the last hope for mankind. The COVID pandemic has therefore raised new challenges, which need to be addressed by transforming global governance through reform, restructuring, and strengthening global institutions of governance. We continue to call for the reform of the United Nations, which at present represents one of the best attempts to establish global governance institution. The United Nations needs to be democratized to reflect the realities of the current geopolitical international situation. Honorable Justice Mrs. Gertrude Torkorno, the Judge Supreme Court of Ghana will be able to join us. And while these changes were happening on the ground, the virtual change also began. We are now familiar with infrastructure created by globally conducted industries such as the finance sectors of economies for the easy flow of money through digital and electronic means. However, by the very nature, judiciaries have functioned within the silos of sovereignties that political business has been conducted in. Although most judiciaries and governance institutions have adopted electronic means of doing business in order to better serve their communities. It is time now to invite Honorable Justice Daphne Barak Erez, Judge Supreme Court of Israel. This reality puts a challenge to all branches of government. The executive that has to regulate human behavior, the legislature that has to enact new laws addressing the new situation, and obviously the courts, which are the guardians of human rights, and therefore have to practice judicial review of actions that limit them. But at the same time, also have to be aware not to block vital regulation. Honorable Mr. Justice, Slevolod Niazvez, the judge from the Supreme Court of Ukraine. May I just uh, comment on one more thing in what uh, Ms. Erez said? 
And one of the things I noted, uh, ma'am, you, that you said was that um, uh, in, in Israel, the children, uh, the youngest children have gone back for face-to-face -face education first, and the older children continue their education online through Zoom and other video conferencing platforms and other uh, technological solutions. That's very interesting, if I may say, and indeed the reason was the one that you mentioned, that according to scientific findings, uh, the younger children are uh, less likely to, to get uh, uh, the virus, but obviously uh, the people who regulate the education system uh, just go on, uh, uh, I would say, uh, um, looking after the, the findings and the, the situation on the ground. Even though we had a few petitions, because of the manner in which um, the, 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 the stoppage of activities on various uh, parts of the country was done, um, it was always over a very short period. It was always for a very small group of people consistently tracking the disease and tracking the places where it, its activities could be felt worst and ensuring that it, the whole nation did not go into lockdown. Um, we, find, we found that um, the, the number of protests were very low. We had consistent updates from government and um, schools were functioning virtually, uh, courts were functioning virtually, and, and, and so, um, there were not many protests concerning individual rights. Would you like to give any uh, closing remarks, ma'am? Thank everybody. I'd like to thank all the participants of this uh, session for very kindly giving of their valuable time. You know, one of the things that I said at the start of this conference uh, two days ago, I would like to just reiterate that, and that is that, you know, we are a humble school in a developing country, and I might add, in a quite uh, deprived part of India. The fourth thematic session hosted by Mrs. Nisha Pandey and Mrs. Poonam Arora, Principal CMS, exploring tackling race, religion and gender prejudices. We request you ma'am to please express your views over this very relevant issue. Uh, we have to work on uh, work on the creating the place of the interracial harmony and we have to break down the uh, interreligious wars and through the a lot of religious and inter uh, interface meeting dialogue meeting we are in very serious uh, situation uh, about the covid-19 situation yeah so uh, we should overcome this situation yes in various ways so uh, hwpl uh, donated plasma uh, for development uh, of covid-19 treatments i would now like to invite the chairperson for the session honorable justice dr bj oduki former chief justice supreme court uganda to take the proceedings further humanity is one and religion is one in a short we are advocating for humanity, for dignity of person, for the unity in diversity. We now invite Honorable Miss Justice Concetta Girillo, Judge Court of Reggio Calabria, Italy. In 2017, an interview by the French journalist Dominic Walton, the Pope said, we can we call a thing by their name. Marriage is a between a man and woman. This is a precious term. We call sex union civil union. In the period of COVID, that we are expensive. This also becomes a, a egg problem. For example, only relatives can enter hospitals. Discrimination against companions who have been in the relationship for a year. But the theme of the race has always found great international recognition in the words of the Pope. I now take this opportunity to invite our next esteemed panelist for today, Her Excellency, 
Rima Harrison Carmona, former First Lady of Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Education continues to be the catalyst to eradicate the negatives associated with race, religion, and gender prejudice. I recall the old African saying, and I quote, when you educate a girl, you educate a nation, end quote. In addressing the issue of gender prejudices, it is important to assess how the international community has attempted to eliminate prejudices against women and girls over the past few decades. Education and female empowerment walk hand in hand. Empowerment is about the inherent right of women and young girls to understand, to shape, control, and be in charge of their own lives and their own destinies. With this, we come to the end of today's session. I would like to thank all the speakers who joined us for today's session. Your valuable inputs have made this session truly meaningful and has helped to serve its purpose. The fifth plenary session hosted by principals Mrs. Sangeeta Banerjee and Mrs. Jyotsna Atul. I would like to invite the first speaker, Honorable Justice Rosa Maria Econ, Judge of the Criminal Court of Appeal, Costa Rica. The pandemic has shown us the true and real social face of my country and of many countries around the world. Never before the humanity has had so much in common with this virus, and yet never it has been so far apart in handling the pandemic in a supportive and coordinated way. In Gutierrez's words, these challenges cannot be addressed effectively by states alone. It is necessary to broaden the idea of global governance to taking businesses, civil society, cities and regions, academia and young people. We now request our most respected Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, who is the convener of this conference, to formally introduce our chief guest for the day. We are extremely honored to welcome Honorable Just Mr. Brijesh Patak, Cabinet Minister for Law and Justice, uh, Legislative Justice, Conventional Energy Sources, and Political Pension, Government of Uttar Pradesh. हम सब जानते हैं कि जगदीश गांधी जी का प्रारंभ काल से ही इस दिशा में बहुत ही गंभीर प्रयास रहा है कि दुनिया का एक ऐसा कानून हो कि हम प्रेम के आधार पर लोगों को एक दूसरे से जोड़ सकें एक दूसरे की वैमनस्ता समाप्त हो और दुनिया को एक हम एक ऐसा प्लेटफॉर्म प्रदान करें कि जितने भी बच्चे हैं उनके एक ऐसा माहौल मिल सके वो महसूस कर सके कि दुनिया एक अपना घर है I would like to briefly translate what Honorable Mr. Brijesh Pathak ji has just said. Dr. Jagdish Gandhi has been making serious efforts on this path to provide children an environment in which they feel that the world is one and that they are citizens of one world. That these, these efforts have been consistent, relentless, and long-standing. I would like to apprise the esteemed speakers that we now have a video address by Honorable Justice Dr. Josepha V. Zaga Pellegrin, Judge, Superior Court of Lima, imperative. Peru. How can we empower children and young people to be the protagonists of social transformation? How can we make them aware that we cannot be happy if there are people who do not have access to basic services, health and education? All this is invisible to central, local and regional governments as long as money continues to flow from corruption requirements. Historically, our countries shared the colonial heritage that implanted a system of economic and political inequality. It's now a proud privilege to have respected Dr. Natalia Oriko Skaya, the head of the department of Humanities of the Financial University under the government of Russian Federation. It consists in saber interpretar cualquier tipo de crisis como desafío y adoptar una nueva perspectiva más humanitaria para un futuro mejor, donde impere la paz y que desde la comunidad internacional podamos lograr una calidad de vida. Today, I want to emphasize how we all can confront this change and how we all can come together 
in the face of this crisis to better the world as one singular entity. Uh, we once again feel obliged as we proceed to welcome our guest of honor for the day, His Excellency Mr. Jean Henry Siant, Prime Minister of the Republic of Haiti. В связи с распространением эпидемии COVID-19 и введением карантина возникла проблема необходимости в переходе на дистанционное обучение. In connection with the epidemic COVID-19, the necessity of distant education has arrived in the whole world. We never thought of such a method before, but due to pandemic, we have found a new method of education, that is distant education. She spoke about the meaning of distant education. In distant education, the education is fulfilled through technological means, that is with the help of information technology. Distant education became popular with the advent of internet and it opened a possibility for self-education. To become a part of the video address by our guest of honor, His Excellency, Mr. Jean Henry Siant, Prime Minister of Republic of Haiti, le mal alarme. Pas un coin de la terre qui n'est son lot de victimes, de morts et de contaminés. Les pleurs ne tarissent pas. La pandémie frappe hommes, femmes et enfants, tous vulnérables. Tandis que la science médicale. That this, uh, this is the time today when we all need to engage towards solidarity to bring back the previous civilization where everyone was happy. This is a tragic event, which is COVID, which is a menace, which brings, a, which requires everyone to make a dialogue, to have a collective power. We have seen a lot of vic victims of COVID, and we have also developed a lot of medical, uh, medical uh, supplies like vaccines at all levels through sanitization. Also, we have tried to remove COVID, but. Today, what is required is the solidarity which should be collective. The fifth thematic session hosted by principals Mrs. Jay Shri Krishnan and Mrs. Reena Soti. May I please request our respected founder director, Dr. Mrs. Mrs. Bharti Gandhi, to do the honors, please. Now I am going to present this award, Lord Buddha Award, to Honorable Justice Dr. Josepha V. Isaga Pellegrin, Judge Superior Court of Lima, Peru. It is my pleasure to invite the moderator for the session, Dr. Sohail Mohajar. He is the head of Value Education and Junior Youth Empowerment Program at City Montessori School, Lucknow, India. Uh, our first speaker is Honorable Justice Dr. Louis George Gamboa Olia. Judge Supre Superior Tribunal, Mexico. Love in the times of COVID-19 has been transformed. It has become invisible, but powerful. Love is in the turbulent times have been accompanied by many other emotions that we have forgotten. Compassion, gratitude, kindness, altruism. In this global difficult situation, from here, from, from Buenos Aires, from Argentina, and from my institution, the Judicial Academy. We are proud of being part of this effort, and we, we are highly committed to the ideals of this conference. And um, from here, we would like to wish you a successful one particularly in, in, in the middle of this global situation. The next speaker is Honorable Ms. Justice Adriano Oroco Caveria. Asociado a la influencia de las actividades humanas sobre las condiciones del sistema climático. I'm glad to I can join the conference with all of you. I will gonna guide, I'm going to give my, my speech in Spanish. And for this reason, the human being is the necessary element of compensation to the planet for the conservation of life itself and it. The effort is global, or at least it would be, it would be expected. 
Según los datos de la ONU, el cambio climático afecta a todos los países en todos los continentes, produciendo un impacto negativo en su economía, en la vida de las personas, en esta calidad de vida y en las comunidades, y se prevén consecuencias aún mayores. The role of the judiciary in ensuring that nations and organizations respect international and world law was highlighted during the sixth plenary session hosted by principals Mrs. Ruchi Bhuvan Joshi and Mrs. Shivani Singh. Let us all rise for the school prayer by the students of City Montessori School. I bear witness, oh my God, that I Here with us this beautiful morning, Professor Balraj Chauhan, Vice Chancellor Dhamshastra National Law University, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. As the chief guest, we welcome you, sir. I express my heartiest gratitude for kindly finding time out of his busy schedule to be the chief guest at this online 21st International Conference of Chief Justices of the world. Now I would like to invite Mr. Ratan Chan Gupta, who is the General Secretary of the conference and has played a very important role in making the Judges Conference a great success since its inception. This school, City Montessori School, is propagating the idea of civil world law or international law enacted by constituting world parliament and an improved global governance structure. Through, this is being done through the international conferences of chief justices as, as this one. From the very beginning of the conference in, in the year 2001. We believe that it is the duty of the present generation to bequeath to our children a better inheritance than that inherited by us. I would like to invite Honorable Mr. Justice Kamal Kumar now, Acting Chief Justice Fiji Islands. The most significant step towards global governance was formation of United Nations after the Second World War. UN has 193 members and plays a significant role in assisting the member states towards organizing their social, economical, political, and other related activities. This is to ensure that laws, rules, regulations, and policies that affect human beings are based on common law principles which protect our fundamental rights and freedom. Now, coming to COVID-19, according to statistics published as of yesterday by Worldometer, we had 50,150,049 cases, 35,525,025 persons have recovered. 1,255,533 
persons have passed away. 13,369,499 are currently infected with COVID. It gives me immense pleasure to invite our chief guest, Professor Balraj Chohan, Vice Chancellor, Dharmashastra National Law University, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. This platform is all yours, sir, and we are privileged to be a part of this. Of the 21st century seems to exceed the grasp of the current international institutional framework. This Conundrum doesn't mean that nation state need to be suppressed by a better and a stronger set of international institutions. To the contrary, the nation state and the national political leaders constitute the foundation of political legitimacy necessary for global governance and international institutional reform to move forward. Global governance as a regime could not even be fully achieved, and we are discussing about its reforms. And rightly so, as there have not been enough coherence in what we claim to be global governance, global institutions are not working well individually and as a group. For example, the global institutions at the core of the institutional system, such as the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the G8 summit are to varying degrees, to varying degrees, fragmented, unrepresentative, and ineffective, and generally suffer from an corrosive decline in their legitimacy. And they're very earnest when they do that. They're very honest. They want to do it. But what happens is that in reality is that when they come back to their countries, they have to face their domestic, you know, lobbies. And those lobbies say to them, for example, when Mr. Narendra Modi, our Honorable Prime Minister, attended the last uh, climate change talks, and he promised them certain reductions. For example, particularly, I remember, reduction in um, the use of, uh, you know, tubs in which we get, uh, uh, you know, ice creams or, or yogurts. Those are once, once, you know, one-use tubs, which are then thrown away after just a single use. So he promised there that we shall do away with those. When, we ca when he came back, you know, as might have been predicted, the lobbies of those industries that produce those tubs uh, approached him and they were very importunate. They were very, uh, you know, they begged him to go back on his promise. And they said that it'll cause a lot of hardship, a lot of unemployment will happen. We talk about uh, the future of the humanity. When we talk about the existence of the world in such a way so that it is a better living place for all then our uh, vision should be my myopic to farsighted you see we should focus on the issues uh, which uh, are uh, influencing us whether it is our economy whether it is our employment or other things but we must have a plan you see, it is not the question of one judgment. It is not the question of one, one industry and the employment of the 500 or 5,000 or 50,000 people. It is a policy issue. And there must be public-private partnership. Government should come forward. How to minimize the losses of the industry? And I know that the, you are a professor of economics, you understand better how these financial things matters in life. It is true for the family, it is true for the industry, it is true for the nations. With this, we come to the end of this plenary session, the sixth plenary session of the 21st Chief Justices Conference of the World. Thank you very much for joining us.
धन्यवाद द यूनाइटेड नेशन इज दर्ल्ड प्लेटफॉर्म टू डिस्कस इश्यूज टूडे एंड फॉर इट to become the significantly reformed general assembly an interim world parliamentary assembly would help bridge the disconnect between citizens and the united nations the session on creation of a world parliamentary assembly for un accountability and legitimacy hosted by principals mrs jyoti kashyap and mrs trapti dwivedi i request you all to rise for the prayer presented by the students of city montessori school i bear witness oh my god that thou hast created me to glory and worship thee good afternoon wherever you are i am joining you from germany um at the early hours of the morning and it is a great pleasure to moderate this session on a world parliamentary assembly at this online 21st international conference of chief justices of the world um just a few words from me at the beginning uh, the international conference of chief justices of the world um each time has been adopting a resolution at the end that has been stressing the need of supranational world law and um effective democratic world institutions able to implement such law in my opinion this is the most important project of the 21st century so this conference is spot on especially in a time of crisis like now um considering the pandemic but also other issues on the agenda such as nuclear disarmament um that was featured in the thematic video just now um and perhaps at first you can introduce yourself and your organization uh, shortly and then address uh, the topic of this session the world parliamentary assembly i like to express my sincere gratitude for participating 21st iccjw this year thank you very much for uh, the invitation honorable dr jaktis gandhi and bati gandhi and gita gandhi There is no doubt that the leadership of Dr. Jagdish Gandhi and the curriculum of CMS school uh world citizenship education have borne the fruit. Activities especially your uh, world parliament agenda to uh collect the voice from the chief justices to help to cooperate with people for world peace especially the dr jagdish gandhi is interested in this part so uh, i'm just looking forward to listening to you as well in depth because the uh, you shared your opinion and i can follow your opinions as well next to honorable um antonio oposa from the philippines is that correct um honorable oposa mr oposa are you online mr Hello. oposa is not well so his video will be played introduce myself my name is Katerina Kabahidze um i i'm i'm together with this addressing i'm sending sunny weather and um rays of sun to you from moscow um i'm i work um as a teacher when we talk about such um, global institutions as world parliamentary assembly um which should give citizens um 
uh, from all economic, political backgrounds, uh, their voice uh, to uh, tackle social and political issues. So such global institutions as uh, a World Parliamentary Assembly giving vo voice to all the people um, will attract thinkers, deep thinkers. And to become a deep thinker, one needs to be educated. Mr. Honorable Tagai from Kyrgyzstan, um, who um, I was informed would join this session. The pandemic has shown that a full-fledged transition to remote trials requires the development of not only regulatory legal acts regulating the procedure of, for implementing it, but also the availability of a well-established technological process that can ensure data security. It seems to me that the World Parliamentary Assembly, which has representation uh, of people, you know, instead of it being that representatives of the executive branches of the country's various governments send their representatives to the United Nations General Assembly, instead of that, if it were the case that individuals were elected from those respective countries, that that uh, such a world parliamentary assembly would have more legitimacy it would have more democratic representation than um, a un that is composed of um, you know nominated uh, persons from the different countries from the executive branches before we end the proceedings of the session i would like our tech team to kindly play the video presentation of the mahatma gandhi award to Honorable Mr. Justice Hilario David De Jr., former Chief Justice Supreme Court of the Philippines. He is one of the pioneers in upholding the rights of the children of the world and the generations yet unborn to inherit a self and safe and well-preserved Mother Earth. It is my proud privilege and honor to present the Mahatma Gandhi Award to Honorable Mr. Justice Hilario David De Jr., the former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the Philippines. I am really very fortunate to bestow this award to Honorable Justice Hilario David A. Jr., who had made a historical judgment for the children, not only for the children of the Philippines, but also of the whole world in the case of Opposa versus Factorum. He clearly mentioned that it is the intergenerational responsibility of every generation to bequeath a safe and secure future to the next generation and generations yet to be born. Honorable Chief Justice Hilario David Jr. had also blessed the children of City Montessori School by taking part in international conferences of Chief Justices of the World in the years 2011 and 2015. I will now present the award to the Honorable Justice. There are many things to learn from the current COVID crisis. The foremost being that a government's will to enforce laws and rules coupled with the support of an informed public is the key to achieving goals and targets. This was further deliberated upon in the session hosted by principals Mrs. Veera Hajela and Mrs. Shipra Upadhyay. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Mr. Justice Peki Mafalala. Article 51 of the Indian Constitution provides that the state shall endeavor to promote international peace and security, maintain just and honorable relations between nations, foster respect for international law, and encourage settlement of international disputes by arbitration, unquote. The judiciary of the Kingdom of Eswatini recognizes the great effort and resilience of Dr. Jadish Gandhi, who is the convener of the International Conference of Chief Justices of the World. We further recognize that convening the conference of this, mag of, of this magnitude on the part of Dr. Gandhi over the years has been a mammoth task requiring dedication and commitment to the cause of humanity. The great contribution, sacrifice, and achievements made by Dr. Gandhi over the years in promoting peace and security 
as well as protecting the fundamental rights of humanity, will ensure that his name and legacy remains forever embedded in the annals of world history. Dr. Gandhi, in his capacity of being the founder director of City Montessori School, which has an annual enrollment in excess of 55,000 scholars, has contributed immensely to the education of young people in particular and the creation of a pool of mature and stable future leaders of the world community. Humanity has a responsibility to protect, promote, and advance the fundamental human rights of children of the world through domestic and international laws. In addition, government of the world bear the responsibility to invest heavily on quality education, health, elimination of abusive treatment, as well as poverty elimination of children in their respective countries. It's time to listen to the address by Honorable Mr. Justice Mirsad Stricker, Judge, Court of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We feel privileged and hope to be able to contribute to the conference's success by our discussion. We believe that global governance today, which is the theme of the conference, is indeed imperative in the aftermath of COVID. There is another Latin saying, Historia es magistra vinti, but we cannot but relate uh, its meaning for it uh, very truly a life, life's teacher. People will learn and realize that, first of all, wars uh, are pointless, but unfortunately, they have not. The only thing that is really true is that history is continuous fight between good and evil. We are extremely honored to welcome our chief guest of the day, Professor Alok Kumar Rai, Vice Chancellor of Lucknow University. We feel highly honored to have Professor Alok Kumar Rai, Vice Chancellor of the University of Lucknow, amongst us as our chief guest for this session. I am certain that you all will agree that our world indeed could have been a better place than it is today and the deliberations of the conference themed global governance, now a post-COVID imperative, will go a long way in finding solution to issues and problems that have been considered intraceable since a very long time. Having said this, global governance also has got certain other terms related to governance as corporate governance and societal governance. At the University of Lucknow, now corporate governance does not have to do with, with ex exactly business organizations or corporate organizations, but it is about transparency and shifting the onus onto the customer side, onto the receiver side, service receiver side. Another further extension to this global governance has been a societal governance. This is a different norm that, that many of the organizations in the world these days are talking about. And at the University of Lucknow, we did try to practice this and to share some of the facts that during the lockdown period prevailing in, in the country of India, we run our community kitchen for 60 days where we used to support people with uh, 1,500 food packets per day. We also established a mass bank and distributed it among the needy, besides spreading awareness about saving ourselves from the pandemic. Have the pleasure of listening to His Excellency Mr. Stepan Mesic, former President of the Republic of Croatia, he has forwarded us, very kindly recorded and forwarded us a message for this conference. The foundations for global security, trade, and international investments will become even more fragile in comparison to what they currently are. COVID-19 has changed the world. The world must now collaborate to change COVID-19. For a better future, and for all those that have passed from COVID-19, political leaders have a duty 
to care for humanity just as they might care for their city, state, and region. I am a bit embarrassed by the crude approach the United States administration has taken towards the World Health Organization, global cooperation, and economic globalization. I would like to believe that the majority of us still have hope that the United States changes its position on its view of the world and other global powers. Constructive engagement on major issues like this pandemic is absolutely a necessity. This brings us to an end of this particular plenary session. And I hope all of us are taking back valuable points, especially to work together in cooperation and in collaboration to write the new future. The session on role of judiciary in building a more secure and equitable world hosted by principals Mrs. Abha Anant and Mrs. Aditi Sharma. The moment has arrived to welcome and request the president and managing director of City Montessori School, Dr. Geeta Gandhi Kingdon, to deliver her welcome address and also to present an award to a very special person. I think we will leave it as a surprise and request her to make the announcement. Over to you, Dr. Kinder. It's, it's a great pleasure for me uh, to be at this session and uh, to uh, particularly to pay my regards to and respects towards uh, Dr. Uh, Honorable, Honorable Mr. Justice Dr. Adil Umar Sharif, Deputy Chief Justice of the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt. As a judge, that was not perhaps his mandate, but that was a choice that he made. My understanding is that he has done such a big body of work in promoting interfaith dialogue as well. As well as being a, a senior academic, a visiting a professor at so many different universities, particularly in the United States of America. Dr. Adil Umar Sharif has also worked to unite the judiciary of Africa. Friends, it is indeed a great pleasure and honor for me uh, to present the Hope of Humanity Award to Dr. Adil Umar Sharif, Honorable Deputy Chief Justice of the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt. Justice Sharif not only is a prominent member of the judiciary of Africa and indeed of the world. He has also been a staunch and stalwart supporter of the Chief Justices Conference organized by City Monastery School in Lucknow each year from the year 2000 onwards. Justice Sheriff has attended these conferences regularly from the year 2007 to the year 2019 and indeed this year virtually. So that means this year is the 14th year continuously that Justice Sheriff has attended these conferences. He has indeed provided intellectual leadership at these conferences as well as been part lately of the agenda setting for the conference. In addition, Justice Sheriff has provided great leadership to the African judiciary. Under his guidance, the Supreme uh, Constitutional Court of uh, Egypt has uh, organized an annual conference of the African judiciary uh, in the past two years. Uh, I'm also happy to say that in the years that Justice Sheriff came to our conference in Lucknow, he brought along with him, he convinced and brought along with him three chief justices uh, of the Supreme Constitutional Court in Egypt in the year 2016, 2018 and 2019. I'd like to quote something that he said at the uh, ninth International Conference of Chief Justices here in Lucknow. He said, all global problems require global solutions. Then it would be expected from national judiciaries to act and cooperate globally to provide universally acceptable solutions for such increased problems of a global nature. So you can see uh, a global thinker and a towering, colossal intellectual and legal personality and it is our really great privilege to honor him today at this conference. I'm going to do the honoring virtually so it's my great honor now to uh, present the Hope of Humanity Award to Justice Sheriff. And I'd like to read out uh, what it says on the memento that is being presented. The memento has a photograph of uh, Mother Teresa, uh, who was indeed herself a hope for humanity. It says, Hope of Humanity Award for World Unity presented to Honorable Justice Dr. Adil Omar Sheriff, 
Deputy Chief Justice, Supreme Constitutional Court, Egypt, at the 21st International Conference of Chief Justices of the World on Article 51 of the Constitution of India, 6th to 9th November 2020, organized by the World Unity Education Department, City Monastery School, Lucknow, India. Thank you so much, Justice Sheriff, for accepting this award this year from us. We are very happy that we have in this session amongst us the convener of the conference, Dr. Jagdish Gandhi. May I request, sir, to please introduce the chairperson of the session, Professor Ayan Kreer. Welcome, Professor Ayan Kreer, President and Vice Chancellor of the Queen's University, Belfast, United Kingdom. Professor Ayan Kreer was appointed as the President and the Vice Chancellor of Queen's University, Belfast, on 1st of August, 2018. A graduate of the University of Glasgow, Professor Greer became the research fellow at the Department of Medicine, Glasgow, in 1982, and became a lecturer in obstetrics, obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Edinburgh in 1987. May I request the chairperson, Professor Greer, to please give the opening address and also to take the session forward. Here in Northern Ireland, we've had more than our share of troubles with divided communities, segregated schools, and serious conflict. Thankfully, that is now in the past. We used education to bring communities together. We took children from each side of the divided communities to learn together in a reciprocal manner for different parts of the curriculum. So meeting students from the other side of the community and bringing families together. This started as a research project, but it's now routine practice in our education system here in Northern Ireland, bringing communities together. It's also an approach that's been resonating across the world and it's being used in South Africa, Palestine and Kosovo. And because of that impact, we received at Buckingham Palace the Queen's Anniversary Prize for this work at the beginning of 2020. So I'm sure you can understand that this is an example close to my heart of the power of education and the power that I know exists in your school, a school that makes an enormous impact, not just in India, but an impact that resonates across the world. So I'm looking forward to hearing the discussions from the rest of the panelists. And I'd first of all, like to invite Justice Dr. Merendino to give her contribution. City Montessori School of Lucknow, an institution which won the prestigious UNESCO Prize for its activity for education and peace, has the real ability to gather justices from all over the world for mutual exchanges of ideas which are very fruitful. The topic of our thematic group is the judiciary and its role in building a more secure and equitable world. In my country, Italy, judges are committed by the Constitution to build a more secure and equitable society. This stems from the principle that judges are submitted only to the law, from the recognition of the fundamental rights of the human beings, and from the principle of equality and non-discrimination among them, and moreover from the engagement by the state to remove any obstacle to the effectiveness of this principle, with the aim to grant a fair tra treatment to everyone. As the leader of the medical organization Emergency, Mr. Gino Strada said, human rights has to belong to everyone, but really everyone, otherwise you can call them privileges. The issue, the role of the judiciary in building a safer and more equitable world is always topical. And uh, because of this, the position that international law occupies in domestic law still doesn't provide a global and clear answer because it is addressed in various, way, in various way from state to state. Refiriéndonos al tema de exposición, sin duda el papel del poder judicial en la construcción de un mundo más seguro y equitativo es esencial, necesario y preponderante siempre y cuando el papel del Poder Judicial 
se desarrolle en el marco pleno de la democracia. The role of judiciary is applying to law. Others will say that the task of judiciary is to resolve disputes. Both answers are correct, yet incomplete. If you put them together, they provide the right answer. The role of judiciary is resolving conflicts to a role that is in the legal and hence civilized manner. Namely, the primary function of law is an orderly resolution of disputes. Laws are used in disagreements between individuals, between individuals and organizations. Justice Dr. Merendino highlighted that need for cooperation to address global challenges, including the current pandemic. The fact that an independent judiciary was absolutely key and that in Bolivia they were at a very key point with a new government. He again highlighted the inequality brought about by the pandemic and the roles that the judiciary as a key institution has, along with the democratic process in responding. So we've had a really excellent discussion this morning, and I've certainly very much enjoyed the discussion and the debate at this session, and I hope that you all found it energizing and productive too. Can I close by thanking and congratulating not only the Venerable Dr. Gandhi, but also the City Montessori School for organizing this most prestigious event and perhaps more importantly, for having the vision to recognize the need to empower students and young people to support that reformation of global governance that we've discussed today, to build a culture of peace, harmony, and unity for future mankind. I should also thank the session hosts, Mrs. Anant and Ms. Sharma for their support. And I look forward to playing my part in the noble goals that we discussed at this session and to meeting you all again in person soon as we continue our valuable discussions. Well, may I request uh, Professor Geeta Kingdon to please thank the chairperson. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, we're, we're not so, so easily audible. audible. And, and um, all, all the vicissitudes of uh, poor technology, technology were dealt with with great calm. Um, um, we, we, we appreciate very much also that, also that uh, Professor, Professor Greer came, came in person to attend this conference last year. year. And we, and we hope, hope that, that in future, future as well, he will try and time his trips to India uh, to, to coincide with our Chief Justice's Justice conference, because we, we hope the corona, corona crisis will be over by this time next year for certain, and, and that you will be back uh, uh, to, uh, to India, India and, and again, again able, able to join us. us. Having appointed itself as the custodian of the welfare of world's children, City Montessori School believes that any discussion about the future of the world must also involve the generality of humankind. The closing session of the conference, hosted by the principals, Mrs. Sangeeta Banerjee and Mrs. Jyotsna Atul. Our most respected Professor Geeta Gandhi Kingdon, who is the managing director and president of the City Montessori School and the, or the chain of all the schools. May I request ma'am to kindly preside over the closing session of this conference to reinforce hope and belief that good governance and development would be back on track even during and even after the most trying times of our age, that is in the form of COVID-19. Over to you, respected ma'am. If we were to distill what were some of the most important issues that arose at this conference, probably different from different people's points of view, different issues would seem to emerge as the most important. But if I was to think about what is the short list of those issues that I think perhaps most people would agree jumped out at this conference, they would be these three or four issues that I'm just going to read out. It seems to me that one of the most important issues that came out of this conference is that there is a need for clarification of the values that shall underlie global governance. Uh, there's a lack of agreement uh, on what universal values there are on which global governance could be based. For instance, when we talk about equality, one might think that gender equality is a universal value, it is a great, uh, it's, a, it's an irreducible uh, uh, concept and that everybody subscribes to it. But unfortunately, 
it is occasionally, and in fact not too uh, you know, infrequently, uh, castigated as a Western value. So there is a clash of values, and unless there is values clarification, probably there cannot be a very secure global governance. So this is the first, the virtual 21st, 21st International Conference of Chief Justice of the World, organized by the City Montessori School Lucknow, draft resolution 2020. Whereas the United Nations is working for <clears throat> peace, human rights, social uplift, development, and in other fields through its various agencies, but lacks the essential mechanism and authority needed to get decisions of the General Assembly implemented. And whereas COVID-19, a serious pandemic has created fear psychosis due to which a large number of people across the world have passed away and owing to lockdown, the economy has suffered, resulting in unemployment. And whereas global warming and climate change is having an adverse effect impact on this planet and will result in inundating many coastal cities and many small islands and may lead to destruction of biodiversity, forest cover, species and marine life and will have adverse impact on human health. And whereas terrorism at regional and national levels is inciting war-like situations either on ideological, religious, political, ethnic or some other considerations which imperils the peace and well-being of every person including children and future generations. Now therefore, we the Chief Justices and Judges at the 21st Virtual International Conference of Chief Justices of the World on Article 51 of the Constitution of India organized virtually by World Unity Education Department City Montessori School, Lucknow, India, from 6th to 9th, November 2020, do hereby reaffirm the resolutions passed in the previously held conferences of Chief Justices and further resolve, one, that the United Nations be urged, a, to expedite review of the UN Charter, including reform of the Security Council, b, to make earnest efforts for elimination of weapons of mass destruction, and, C. To make efforts for prevention of terrorism, extremism and wars. That the heads of states and heads of government of all countries of the world be urged for three things. One, to take concrete steps to raise the, review of the, review of, raise the issue of the review of the UN Charter as required in the Charter itself. Number two, to deliberate on the present global problems and issues by holding a high level meeting of the heads of states and heads of government to find solutions thereto and to work for the establishment of a representative and democratically elected world parliament to enact enforceable world law dealing to the establishment of a world executive and a world court of justice. And lastly, it was resolved that the copies of this resolution be sent to all heads of states, heads of governments and chief justices of all countries of the world and to the Secretary General of the United Nations for their urgent consideration and possible Action. I am looking at, in fact, um, the organization, the Montessori School, creating what I would refer to as waves of influence. I noticed that you were very specific in relation to the Secretary General of the United Nations, but there is also um, the Chair of the African Union. There is also, in fact, the Secretary General of the OAS. There are a lot of regional bodies, and I feel, for example, that by sending um, out our universal message. Um, we shouldn't restrict it necessarily to the Secretary General, but also to the Chair of the various regional bodies that do have influence with their individual leader, individual countries. That's one thing. Um, the second thing, in fact, you spoke about reform of the Security Council. I feel, for example, that there has been a universal concern with not only reform of the Security Council, but in the short term, democratization of the Security Council. There is concrete suggestion who is to ensure, uh, who has to ensure it, then we can... Well, when we say heads of states and heads of governments of all countries be urged to, I mean, it's, it's really for country governments to respect the independence of the judiciary. So it will be the heads of states and heads of governments of all countries of the world be urged to, and of course, it talks about to, re 
to take concrete steps to raise the issue of the review of the UN Charter as required in the Charter itself, to deliberate on the present global problems by holding a high level meeting and uh, then it says to take urgent steps to check and reduce global warming and then we've added, we will add a sentence about uh, you know uh, the gender equality um, and at that point we could very well talked about um, I mean should it be under that or should it be under the last one which is that the members of the world judiciary be urged to but it's not re I mean <laughs> is it which who would you recommend that, that this is addressed to most Ms. Justice Mindua. Last uh, paragraph of the preamble mm -hmm. uh, hereby reaffirm the resolution passed in the previously held the conferences of the chief justices uh, uh, and reaffirm the necessity mm -hmm. of the rule of law and the de dependence of justice. Mm -hmm. And then we continue. Okay. So I would like to say that we put in the preamble instead of uh, in the dispositive part of the, the resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Decided to approach the world judiciary and solicit their support in favor of the children's cause. The overarching objective of the 21st International Conference of Chief Justices of the World is to impress upon the world community the urgent need of having enforceable world law which lies at the heart of all efforts for ensuring effective global governance. World law that is legislated by a supranational global body and a world court whose decisions and judgments are accepted by all nations of the world.